Let's talk about the parts of the neuron by looking at the anatomy of a motor neuron. For review, let's remember that neurons are nerve cells and they are simply the building blocks of your nervous system. We studied three different types of neurons. The motor neurons, otherwise known as efferent neurons, sensory, otherwise known as afferent, and interneurons. And all three of these neurons transmit nerve impulses. In other words, they have action potentials. Glial cells, which do not transmit nerve impulses, make up 90% of the cells in the nervous system. And while they don't transmit nerve impulses, they provide structure and support to the neuron. This is the diagram we're going to be using today to identify and label the parts of the neuron, and you will find a copy of it in your packet. This happens to be a motor neuron. It is myelinated. It receives messages from the central nervous system through efferent or motor pathways, so it's also known as an efferent neuron. We're going to start with the dendrites, and the dendrites are easily identifiable, bushy branching extensions that receive messages from other neurons and conduct that electrical impulse towards the cell of the body. If you follow my mouse, you can see this is where we'd see all of these action potentials begin traveling towards the cell body. It is called the dendrite, so please put that label. As we move down, that action potential will reach the cell body, also known as the soma, which contains a nucleus and other structures. So we start with neural transmission in the dendrites. The electrical impulse will travel down through the dendrites to the soma or the cell body. And the cell body or soma will carry or conduct that neural impulse away from itself through an axon. So the axon conducts its, and moves the neural impulse away from the cell body to the neuron branches. Yes, there is a typo here. I will fix that. <laughs> so as you can see, we have the dendrites, which receive a signal, an action potential occurs, that electrical impulse travels down towards the cell body. It is then taken out of the cell body, down the length of the axon to the neuron branches, which are called axon terminals. Now you can see here that some of these axons, in the case of a motor um, neuron, it is covered with a protective layer called the myelin sheath. Now that myelin sheath is actually made up of a special type of glial cell called a Schwann cell. So here you can see the myelin sheath. Again, it's made up of those Schwann cells. And you notice though that it doesn't actually cover the entire length of the axon. It segmentally encases the axon. And the reason it does that actually is so when that nerve impulse travels down the length of the axon, it actually goes, it conducts faster. It just hops over these little, what they call nodes of Ranvier, these little nodes here. And as it hops over each node, it actually um, keeps that impulse strong. Now, a fun fact is, while this is a motor neuron and it is um, covered with a myelin sheath, which helps to not only protect that axon, it will also speed up the neural impulses. Pain or neurons that transmit pain to your brain are actually not myelinated. In other words, they travel slower than a motor path uh, message would travel. So it is an, an interesting thing if you've ever thought about it, if you hit your elbow or your toe, sometimes you don't really feel the pain right away and all of a sudden you're like, ah, it hurts so much. Yeah, that is because the axons that are bringing that information to the brain are not myelinated. There are a number of disorders um, like cerebral palsy um, that, cause, that are caused by the demyelinization of neurons. In other words, the myelin sheath that should be there is not there. And as a result of that, they are unable to control certain movements. The other thing that can affect the myelin sheath on an axon is a concussion. And I know many of you have had those concussion studies before uh, you start an athletic activity. And if you do hit your head, they do a second study to make sure you're, you have not had a concussion. Now, concussions are simply this. Now that now they, you know what a concussion is, but what does it really do biologically? Well, look at the, demo, the uh, demonstration here. This axon, which is normally covered with the myelin sheath that looks nice and healthy, all of a sudden it's been torn or ripped apart, okay? So a healthy axon 
would be continuous, as you see on the left side. A unhealthy or dying axon, which might have been due to being hit, okay, um, that damage site may never repair. Now it can be repaired, and which is one of the reasons why you're asked to rest and not use your neurons. Now, while this is showing you a motor neuron, the neurons in your brain are interneurons, and these interneurons can also are myelinated. And so that axon can twist and bend and break. Okay. So just please note, this is a motor neuron, but when we talk about a concussion in your brain, there are no motor neurons in your brain. Those are interneurons. I'll give you a nice big blow up of it here. Look at that site of damage. And of course, with, when the axon terminal is separated from the soma of the cell body, it will die off. Okay, so we were talking about neural messages. Now remember, here are the dendrites which receive neural messages, which, which are neurotransmitters, from other neurons. So that's why I placed these images of other neurons here. These other neurons send a message to the neurons on the other side of what we're going to learn is the synapse, this juncture between two neurons. Okay. So in this synapse here, whoops, let me go backwards. Okay. In this synapse here, um, these neurons will send messages. The dendrites receive those messages. If the message is strong enough, there will be an action potential. That electrical impulse will travel to the soma and then out through the axon, which in the case of some neurons is covered with a myelin sheath that serves to speed up and protect the axon and the neural transmission. Now, at the end of the axon, it starts to branch off again to reach other neurons so it can communicate to them. Now, these bushy extensions, which are not to be confused with dendrites, each of them has this, what you can see on the end of it, a terminal button. Okay, and on the other side, of these terminal buttons is a juncture called that synapse, that gap, okay? And it's basically a gap between neurons. So here we have some neurons up here, a gap, the dendrites of this particular neuron that we are diagramming, and then is that electrical impulse travels down to the length, the length of the axon, to the axon terminals. If indeed that there is an action potential, it is now connected to these other neurons throughout the body. And between those are synapses. Now let's take a look at these terminal buttons in cell because they contain a structure called vesicles. And these vesicles, these sacs, hold the chemical messengers of our nervous system, which are called neurotransmitters. And I'm going to show you a kind of blow up one of those buttons so you can see it. Now, neurotransmitters may sit down here in the axon terminals in these little sacs, but these sacs and the, and the neurotransmitters were actually generated by the cell body, and they do travel down the axon, and they're stored down here in these terminal buttons. So here's a terminal button. So if you were to imagine um, at the end of that axon was that little knob, well, here's this knob right here. And you can see here are these um, messages and um, messengers, the chemical messengers and neurotransmitters, and they're sitting in little vesicles or, or sacs, and it's hard to really see them here, but the, the sacs are like on the dark green and the neurotransmitters are the yellow in this picture. Okay. So again, neurotransmitters are produced by the cell body. They travel down in the sacs to these terminal buttons and they just await, they stay there. They just wait around until an action potential occurs. And if an action potential occurs, these neurotransmitters get released into the synapse. That's the juncture between two neurons. Now, what we're seeing is a blow up of a dendrite, the dendritic membrane of another neuron. Okay. So here's the, another picture. You have an axon, a synapse, um, and then a dendrite. So we have this neuron here, the presynaptic neuron, the one that comes before the synapse. Here are the dendrites, the cell body, the axon, terminal, terminal but terminals, uh, terminal buttons, the juncture between the neurons, which are the synapse, and on the other side of that juncture is a, another neuron, or probably many other neurons, not just one. Now these neurotransmitters, when there is an a electrical charge and when there's an action potential, these neurotransmitters are, are released from their sacs, from these vesicles, and they go into that synapse. 
And remember, neurons form, synap form synapses with many other neurons. In this picture, I'm showing you one. In the previous ones, I showed you how they can be attached to many of them. So I have used the term presynaptic and postsynaptic neuron. And at any given time, a neuron could be presynaptic or it could be postsynaptic. It depends on whether or not it is sending the message. When a neuron gets a message and starts to send it, that message starts to go down through the axon, it's called a presynaptic neuron because it's coming before the synapse. Any neuron on the other side of the synapse is now called a postsynaptic neuron, and they are the neurons that will receive the message. So neurons switch frequently between sending and receiving messages. And the only reason we use the terms presynaptic and postsynaptic neuron is so that we can explain to you the process of neural transmission. So these neurotransmitters go into the synapse and they are either, uh, they either attach themselves to neurons on the other side of the synapse, to so the dendritic membranes of the neurons on the other side of the synapse, or the neurotransmitters don't. And if they don't, they, they have a process that's called reuptake, and they just get reabsorbed by the presynaptic or the sending neuron. So a neuron sends its neurotransmitters out into the synapse. They're either used or they're not. They come back into uh, the sending neuron. And they come back through these channels. Or they're called reuptake channels. Okay, So take a look here. Once again, we have um, the dendrite here. Okay, And you can see that dendrite's been blown up. And you can see the blue membrane of the dendrite here with receptor sites. These receptor sites are on the membrane of the dendron, and they receive these neural neurotransmitters. Okay. Now, the neurotransmitters, once they're done doing their job, or if they never got to do their job, they get sent back up through this reuptake channel. And that's a normal process. Problem is that sometimes these neurotransmitters come into the synapse, and before they even get to do their job, they get sucked right back in. And so they get released and sucked back in, released. And, and you can imagine that that wreaks havoc on your system that needs these neurotransmitters to function properly. So here's a process review for you. And I, I put this chart in here. It's actually part of a, um, an assignment you're going to be doing um, for this uh, particular set of material, the material that you've learned about neurons and neurotransmitters and action potentials. Um, this here is, a, is an action potential. It is a uh, electrical impulse. It, it is traveling down the length of the axon. When it reaches the, this right here is the terminal button. When it reaches that, um, these vesicles that are filled with neurotransmitters uh, are released into the synapse. So here you have the synapse here, and you see the uh, neurotransmitters getting released into it. Okay. These neurotransmitters will bind to the receptor sites on the postsynaptic membrane. That's the dendrite, the membrane of the dendrite. We call it the dendritic membrane. Okay. And then once they're done you know, doing their job, they'll go ahead and go back into the sending neuron, the presynaptic neuron. Now, if there's enough neurotrans, if the neurotransmitters open up enough of these channels and um, the cell reaches threshold, it 